All right, so you just saw the video that I shot a couple weeks ago where I found that carved printing press or letter press piece. Now that camera I had been using for about five years. It's a Sony camera. Probably the highest is probably like 720 pixels that it had on it. So it was getting kind of a relic compared to some of those new cameras that are out today. As you can tell right now, this is going to be an HD. I just got a Hero 4 Silver, so I can shoot up to 1080 um, pixels, um, 1440, 4K, a little bit. But I'm going to use this to, this to shoot HD video um, with my new channel in their footsteps. Okay, so I'm going to go through that artifact I found last time that I put some pictures before this the printing press piece now you can kind of tell in the pictures that I put on to the video that it's a very small piece I don't have it with me here at my apartment in at grad school it's back home in a safe place but it is literally the side the width of a penny so it's very small my dad and I had to use a little uh, zoom in lens on our cameras to actually be able to see all the different carvings that the guy had to do his whole name. It was kind of hard first just with the naked eye but the guy must have held it and used just a little small pen knife and carved his name into it and you can tell how he was having some trouble at some points where he would start off in cursive and then have to pick it back up and then start carving again which is why the R looks kind of messed up. And if you think about it, if you're trying to do an R, a cursive R where you're going up and then coming back down and then doing the little, little tiny kind of tail at the top and coming back down, when you're coming back down, that pen or that pen, pen knife is gonna try to find that groove that you had when you first carved up. So you can kind of tell where he kind of messed up the R a little bit and couldn't swing it across to make that little ear at the top. It got, got caught in the groove again and he just decided to pull it back on down and do the rest of the his last name. His last name is Garlock, G-A-R-L-O-C-K. And within the two different sides of the piece, you can piece together that it is Garlock, in fact. The first side the, with, the, with his first initial H has a capital G in lowercase a r l o c k and the k is um, it's like a little lowercase k uh, you can kind of tell it's a k but then on the other side where he does his last name garlock and underline um, you can really tell that it's a, it's a k because he actually you know um, he stops the k halfway and then just finishes little checks to make the k so there is no doubt in my mind that it is H. Garlock. And whenever my dad and I found that, we, or I searched the web under the Civil War Soldiers database. And the first thing that popped up that matched was Henry Garlock. Now, I'm going to bring the camera back here and I'm going to show you some of the history of um, his regiment which was the 21st Missouri Infantry. Now, if you see right here, this is the 21st Infantry page. Some gentleman actually set it up so you can find out, find out all the history of it. But uh, their service history was basically, the 21st Missouri Infantry was first the 1st Missouri Infantry. And they were volunteers out of Northeast Missouri, so above St. Louis. And the first, uh, from what I can tell, from what I can read about it, there's not much history about it. It only served in 1861. And then in December of that year, they had a, they mustered into the 21st Missouri Infantry. So um, from what I can tell, uh, Henry Garlock was in the first. And then in December of that year, he joined back up had a three-year enlistment in the 21st Missouri. And their first action was at Shiloh, Tennessee. 
in 62. And uh, with Grant's army, or Halleck's army, after Shiloh, uh, they advanced on Corinth, um, fought at the Battle of Iuka and the Battle of Corinth, and then they kind of stayed with Grant in his campaigns in Mississippi. Uh, they were not a part of the Battle of Vicksburg. They were actually, yeah, they were actually up in Kentucky at the time, uh, which is where I was at. And they did the Meridian Campaign, Red River Campaign, Battle of Pleasant Hill, then, at the very end of their service, they actually fought in the last major battle of the Civil War, which was the Battle of the Spanish Fort and Fort Blakely in Alabama. So they they were all over the Western Theater, either in campaigns or garrison. So they were they were all over the place. And the cool thing is that. I can actually track that this regiment was actually at that same spot that I found the piece at. So that, that little printing press or letter press block I found in the area where I found a full knapsack. I found all the brass uh, um, parts to the knapsack, the 2J hook to the triangle piece, the hook that would go uh, into the triangle piece. There should be more stuff there. We had to leave because it was dark, but next time I go there, I'm probably going to find the rest of the iron buckles and anything else that was in that knapsack when it was lost or tossed. But this printing press block was in that same area, so I'm pretty sure that this was Henry's knapsack that he tossed over the hill. So that, that's kind of cool that I can actually pinpoint him to being at that specific spot. Um, and that, that that's just really cool because that spot only has 69 caliber three ringers and there were um, that's all we found except for the last time I was there I found a 69 caliber musket ball that was melted but that's, that's kind of cool seeing how even in the western theater in mid to late war some of these units were still being issued 69 caliber weapons rifled of course but still 69s but this right here is the find a grave of Henry Garlock. His middle name was Cuppet. But what I thought was cool is the person who set this up actually has his uh, statement about his Civil War record before his death. And he died in 1925. He was born in 1842. So he was, uh, I think he was... I think it said 18 when he joined up, but yeah, yeah, he would have been 18 um, in 19, his first year of service. So he was he was really young guy. But the cool part that I like is right here, his Civil War record that he said, he said, I enlisted in the 1st Northeast Missouri Regiment on the 15th day of November, 1861. On the first day of February, 1862, the 1st Northeast Missouri Regiments were consolidated into the 21st Missouri Infantry. I served in the Union Army four years, five months, and 14 days. I was in the Battle of Shiloh, Tennessee, also at the Battle of Corinth, Mississippi. After the battle at Tupelo, Mississippi, we marched to Missouri to drive General Price out of the state. We captured General Marmaduke at the rear guard of General Price's army at Independence, Missouri. I was left to Independence to guard the prisoners that had been captured. Then we took the prisoners to High Hill, Missouri, and from there we were sent to St. Louis, and the army marched to St. Louis. The army was in St. Louis for, for a two- or three-day rest, then sailed down river to Nashville, Tennessee. We had a two-day battle there with General Hood, in which his army was annihilated. We marched from there to Eastport on the Tennessee River and remained there in winter quarters until March 1st. Then we sailed to New Orleans, taking a seagoing vessel and going to the mouth of the Fish River. We went up the river in light boats to the Spanish Fort and Fort Blakely. On April 7th, we captured the Spanish Fort. Then we moved to Fort Blakely and captured that fort on April 9th, 1865. We buried our dead and picked up our wounded and sent them to the hospital on April 10th. The 11th day of April, we started to Montgomery, Alabama, the rebel capital. After marching three days, we received word that General Lee had surrendered to General Grant at 1 o'clock, April 9th, 1865. He leaves to mourn his death, the five children, Will of Oklahoma, and that, that just goes on 
to list that um, Henry's family um, that he left when he died. But I thought that was really cool that either the family or someone close to the family actually had his, you know, last, um, you know, his last uh, own personal record of his own Civil War service. And you can kind of see right there, that's his, uh, his grave marker. It's kind of tilted, it needs to be fixed up, in my opinion. Um, a little more respect if it's, you know, upright. But that's pretty cool. Um, so I just wanted to, to show a little bit of the research that I did in finding the guy who carved the piece. That's the first ID'd artifact that I've found from the Civil War era. I have found the carved bullet before that was in the shape of a human face, and that was probably my you know, most personal relic up to date until I found this piece. So I'm still in the process of figuring out if he has any living relatives, direct relatives. His family line and his brothers and sisters' family lines, they've all, well, except for his, they've all run out. So there's no one living with the Garlock name um, anymore and none that are actually you know closely related to Henry except for his own family line and he had great great grandson that is supposedly still living I'm still trying to figure out exactly where he's living right now um, so watch for updates in that process of me trying to find an ancestor and what comes from that so hopefully that will form in the future but so the big news since I have this new camera this new GoPro I'm going to use it my dad and I are going on a trip this Thursday so in three days today's Sunday so my dad and I are heading down to a Civil War site with a bunch of friends this site is mostly Confederate uh, so there should be some good Confederate stuff there um, if not any brass or anything, there should be some bullets that we should find. So I'm kind of excited to use this camera. I have a set mount on my detector that I'm going to use, as well as just using it just handheld. And I might kind of test some other ideas of how to mount it, either by hat or um, different places on my metal detector. So, um, so keep in touch. Watch my videos, subscribe. I should have some videos coming up whenever I get back from this trip. I'm going to upload this video that you're probably watching right now soon. So look for any updates on my Facebook page, which is named In Their Footsteps. I'm going to post some updates throughout the trip on there since it's, you know, Facebook, I can, you know, add you know, posts and comments and stuff, and I can reply to stuff a whole lot easier. So look for updates on my Facebook page, like it, um, comment if you want to, leave a post. So um, that Facebook page is really new. I'm going to start to try to get it running soon. And also my channel, so just watch for new videos. I should have a lot of videos when I come back from this trip. So comment, subscribe, like my page on Facebook, and... Good luck out there.